view on Thor, Love and Thunder, the next movie of the MCU Phase 5. What was this review like? Was it any good, this movie for the God of Thunder? Not really. I mean, it's not bad. It's not brilliant. It's okay. Which I'm shocked at because I'm standing here reviewing this now and I never thought I would give a Thor film a lower rating than this. I mean, I've loved Thor since 2005. I mean, when, you know, he was introduced to the first Thor film and then you had Thor The Dark World, Thor Ragnarok, and then he was really good in all the Avengers movies. So Thor is, in this film, trying to find himself. He's lost his brother. He's lost his mother. He's lost his father. He's lost Asgard, the city in the realms in space. Heimdale is dead. Half of his people are gone. And now he's trying to help the new Asgardians, the new people, the remaining people of Asgard. And in this, he's trying to find himself. After the events of Endgame, he's kind of trying to wonder, who am I anymore? He's at a point where he's lost everyone. He's kind of got schizophrenia, which I kind of noticed in this, because he's affected a lot by the events of Endgame and everything else that's happened to his life. He's trying to discover, what is the point of me anymore? And while he's trying to find himself, as you know from Endgame, he's travelling with the Guardians of the Galaxy, trying to restart again. You know, when someone hits a bottom point in life and thinks, I'm going to make myself something again. I'm going to restart my life. I'm going to make myself go on a chosen path. And while he is fighting with the Guardians of the Galaxy, trying to discover what sort of Thor he is now, he receives a distress call from Lady Sif saying that Gore the God Butcher is killing gods. Now, Gore the God Butcher um, has a reason for doing this. He believes that all gods are selfish and they all need to die. They all need to be mass massacred by his necro sword, which is what he uses to kill the gods. So while Thor is trying to protect the new people of Asgard uh, from Gore, he finds himself in a fight running into his ex-girlfriend. That's right, Jane. The girl that he, the one that got away as, <laughs> as, um, <laughs> as Korg points out, he's the girl that, she's the girl that got away. Uh, Nicole Kidman is fantastic in this role. Her with muscles is brilliant. And when she takes on the, the mighty Thor, it is amazing. Her presence, her powers, this new fond responsibility she has is brilliant and when he finds himself in the fight he finds himself running to jane it's been so many years since they've seen each other she got blicked um there's new things going on but there's a reason why she's the mighty thor she has an, a, a reason and a story of why she's holding this hammer uh and it actually does work very well at times during the fight, he's helping basically Queen Valkyrie, who is now the new Queen of Asgard. I love the fact they introduced the LGBTQ Queen of Asgard and how they brought that into that theme into the Thor movie. However, they didn't use it. I mean, this is the Queen of Asgard. This is the future queen of the people. And they turned her into some sidekick joke, which I thought, well, what was the point of that? You know, she was just, she felt like a more of a third wheel in this Thor and Jane connection. They didn't use her enough. In fact, actually, they didn't use her for the purpose she was supposed to be used, which I felt was poor and didn't work within the film. They find themselves trying to stop Gore, trying to kill the gods, and they realise they must, they must seek the help of the mighty Zeus, played by uh, played by the brilliant man who was in Les Miserables. Uh, you'll remember him, he played Javert, and he was pretty good i mean uh, kind of russell crowe is actually a very good actor but eh, i mean he wasn't that good in lemus rabla i don't care what people say in the reviews he's supposed to be like that and i think that his portrayal of zeus is very clever it works within his origin story and at times it kind of works he's kind of funny and he's supposed to be this character i can't say much about it because you have to see the movie to understand his character archetypes on what's the purpose of obviously Zeus they must they travel to the god city basically to ask them for help against Gore and in this film they're trying to stop Gore's mighty plan uh, on how he's going to destroy all the gods and Jane must work with Valkyrie with Thor to kind of stop Gore from killing all the gods in the movie now don't get me wrong the story is actually pretty good I mean I get a story but the problem is the conclusion to Gore's Gore's story 
was stupid. The reason for what happened within the film was ridiculous, idiotic, and it just ruined the next phase. Because the reason for what happened in the Thor film, which is supposed to connect to the future MCU, uh, which, by the way, I don't know if you guys know, and San Diego Comic Con did release it, and I will be saying this on my channel, the next phase of the MCU is Secret Wars, which means that we are introduced to Kang the Conqueror and... Everyone's kind of guessed it by now. I'd be surprised if he didn't turn up. The rumours are that Doctor Doom will be the second villain in the Secret Wars, plus Secret Invasion as well. So we're getting into all the multiversal war and Kang trying to re re-establish and recreate the universe. If you've read the comics and know Kang's storyline, you kind of know where this is going. But MCU have a different version, so I'm quite looking forward to it. But the problem is, one of the pro ending conclusion of Thor that connects to Secret Wars has now just messed this up. So I don't know how they're going to recover what they've just done because it did not, does not work within the next phase, which is complicated and it doesn't really work. The special effects are actually very good. The kinematography of this film is great. How it introduced the realm of the gods, introduced gore. And let's talk about Christian Bale, shall we? I don't care what people say. I actually liked him. In fact, actually, I loved him. He was brilliant. It, you know a villain, and you know an actor's brilliant, when your girlfriend is hiding behind you in the cinema when he's on the film. Because she was. He was terrifying, he was horrific, um, he, and how he just enjoyed the role, and I think he really did enjoy playing this part, because he was scary, he was eerie, he was creepy. This appearance of him just emerging to the darkness with the eyes was just absolutely fantastic. His... Um, his presence and his entrances within this film was absolutely spot on and fantastic. It worked really well and it was scary, actually scary. And you know, which makes sense because MCU is going darker now with all their new films. So he was not the problem. The conclusion to his story was the problem, as I just said. The introduction to the next part was the problem and they made a decision that was not just stupid, that just, it was just a joke. Like, what was the point of that? You made this decision for a film and then chose to destroy it. If you watch the film without going... I'm trying to do this without spoiling it. If you watch the film, you kind of see what I'm going, where I'm going with this. The story is okay. I kind of liked the whole kind of um, trying to go after Gore. Uh, Thor trying to find himself, the reason of why he must exist and what's happening and why he must do what he's doing. Um, and it kind of gives him a new reason to, to recreate himself. It gives him, he's trying to find a new way to live because he feels like everything's gone now. What's the point? And you kind of do feel for him because he's lost the most in the MCU. Um, I thought the monsters were really good in this as well. Um, the writing was pretty good. The comic element, I mean, come on, they made Valkyrie a third wheel. Jane was brilliant, but the conclusion to her story was stupid. I feel the director didn't really think about Thor and didn't really process how he was going to do this movie before he did it. Don't get me wrong, the story's okay, the comedy's good, elements of special effects are good, cinematography is awesome, the actors are fantastic. I mean, Chris Hemsworth as Thor is really good in this film because he, again, is on a different version, he's a different journey, he's lost everything, he's trying to find himself, he's trying to conquer, as I thought, in the film, and he has got schizophrenia, I'm, and you'll see what I mean when you watch it, he's definitely got schizophrenia in this film. Natalie Portman is fantastic as Jane. Jane is brilliant in this film. She's trying to understand why she's been given this new power, her reason of why she's here as well, and it's touching. It's very beautiful, actually, her story of why she's holding the hammer. Valkyrie, again, okay, again, made her a side joke. She's this, this is the queen of Asgard, and they made her into a clown. Which, I'm sorry, is pathetic, stupid, and wrong. Come on, how do you mess up the future queen of Asgard? So, and also Korg was quite funny as well. I liked Korg, I thought, Takiti, uh, Takiti Wakiti. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Feel free to put the actual name in the comment below, because I'm not going to be able to spell that. He was really good as Korg. It's quite funny. had the comic element. Pierce Brosman, very good as Zeus. Um, and he was okay. I thought it was pretty good. Um, but, but honestly, the conclusion and the ending and, and, you know, how this story was going into and past the story was just stupid and it didn't work. So for all those reasons, I've got to give Thor Love and Thunder three stars. 
So Fulham and Thunder, maybe you disagree with me, maybe you don't. Did you enjoy it? What did you think about it? Please let me know in the comment section just below this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. If you want to see any more of my movie reviews, or if you're enjoying my videos, or if you just like my reviews, then go ahead and click that subscribe button if you want to. Thanks for watching. Give, it, give this video a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends, as I'll be doing this week, and I will see you in my next movie review.